Earlier today, Brett said to me, how is Kate Campbell not better? She's super technically efficient in the water. She's a strong, powerful woman, and she's so, so good at this sport. And it, you know, it shocks both of us that she's not going fast at times. Maybe a 22 point for 50 freestyle or a 50 point for the 100. She's still fast. She's one of the fastest ever, but uh, she's not the fastest ever, at least not in long course meters. And earlier today, she raced the final of the women's 50 freestyle at the World Cup stop in Athens. Going up against someone else we're going to talk about today, and that's Sarah Shostrom, who arguably is the most successful women's sprinter in history. She's been around since 2009. She's been setting world records since 2009, all the way to this year, where she set the 50 freestyle world record in 23.6. And they're just two brilliant athletes going head to head. It's great to see. And we're going to break it down. Uh, Brett Hawke, one of the best sprint coaches of all time, if not the best, and that's my words, not his. Um, we're gonna break this, this down. So we're gonna click play and we'll watch it through. We'll probably zoom in and look at some of the attributes of the race. Should we, uh, should we get into it? Let's go. Talk us, talk us through it as you watch it, Brett. Talk it through. Well, first of all, I'm just looking at Kate uh, stand on the block here. She's uh, got size and length. She's very rangy. And I used to compete against athletes like this myself. And then when I coached Bruno Fratis, who was a smaller, shorter, more powerful athlete, he would have to compete against athletes who looked very similar to the kind of the, the range and the size of Kate Campbell in terms of the length, right? Uh, massive wingspan, big long legs. Uh, as we can see here though, her tempo seems to be fairly low. Sarah Sostrom is next to her and she's tempoing up. We're going to do some figures here in a minute where we actually get the tempos, but just on the eye itself, first look, it looks like she's going for length and it looks like Sarah's going for tempo. So there we go, 24-1 to 24-5. They were both quicker last week at the Berlin stop, 23-9 and 24-1 there. But uh, yeah, what Brett's saying there in this portion of the race, like you really see they hit the 25 very close. Sarah has got a slight lead. That's a 35. 35, let's go to the 25. There we go, yeah, they're very close to the 25, right? Mm. And um, the first thing I see is here, right at the 30 meter mark, bang. Oh, Kate right. Campbell takes a big breath and I can see her face for a full second. So that means she's sitting on that side, it's not a quick breath at all, and, and she's basically losing her momentum and speed. So she sits there, and then she has to regather it when she puts her face back into the water. By that stage, Sarah's pulled away Illinois. just that yep. slight bit. Yeah. Um, we noticed that. We also counted the strokes. A 39 strokes to Sarah. How many was Kate? 34 for Kate. That's so a big difference. Five strokes yep. difference. Yeah. She's going for length. She's going for length, which is going to cost her on that tempo range right so like sarah's going for a little little bit shorter length maybe she's not as rangy as kate okay so but she's tempoing up so she's going for that maintenance of, of speed and tempo kate is looking for that length and ultimately i think the breath is the deciding factor here at the 30 meter mark where sarah holds firm and again it's commitment it's commitment to speed speed is about maintaining a body position maintaining that tempo and um and holding firm in the water the problem is when kate takes that breath everything stops and then she has to restart again and kind of find that speed again for those who want to know the stroke rate differences between them 61 strokes a minute for sarah 52 strokes a minute for kate the only thing i did notice and you picked this up before we recorded but uh kate's start here if we just we just zoom in on kate's start she seems to be like left on the blocks right like mm. Can we go super slow mo? Let's just uh, let's go frame by frame. Mm -hmm. This foot's off the block, and yep. Kate's, Kate's still got that front foot. I mean, tori has got the the, the, the more resp responsive start there, but that's. I mean, look how much. I mean, that's what point one right there. Yeah, and let's, and let's watch the angle here. Let's see the angle. So from hand touch, Sarah lines up, maintains her body. She's she's half a body length in the pool by the time Kate just touches I mean, with her fingers, right? Her feet are gone and Kate's. Case legs, yeah, they uh, both got good line. Hold a nice line. I would put my money on Sarah having a better dolphin kick, right? Like she's the butterfly, so she's probably going to have a better dolphin kick. She doesn't really come out ahead though, so I would say the the angle that Kate hit off her dive was very clean, and she holds her length very well. Look at the feet entry there. Beautiful by Kate, I would say. It's just slow. The reaction time yeah. is slow. Now her length and the way she shoots forward. Kind of gets her back in line with Sarah there. So at about the 15 minute mark, I'd say there's probably a couple of hundreds in it. That's about it. 
Through the 15 mark, they're, they're pretty close. The mm -hmm. same can be said about the 25, and it is really the 35 mark where we see that separation start to happen, and that's, yeah. as you know, the breath. So if you were to give three points right off the back to Kate Campbell to improve her 50 freestyle, what would they be? Well, first of all, her reaction time. See if mm -hmm. she can get off the block a little quicker because she does have a good line off the block. Um, I, would, I would work on building into those first three strokes, okay, like hit it, hit it, hit it, and then building in a little bit more tempo. She's kind of at that top end of the 100 tempo, so it looks, more like, right, yeah. Yeah, it looks more like 100 freestyle tempo. I would want to see her up around 58. I think that's where she's mm -hmm. going to get a lot more effective, be a lot more powerful. So around that 58 mark, um, the reason why Sarah's not taking a breath is because it's faster, and she's dedicated to that. She's trained it, and um, she is, uh, she's got that ability just to say, no, I, I know I need a breath, but I've, I've worked this, and I'm going to hold it. Uh, Kate, on the other hand, is saying, I'm going to work this breath in, and, and that's going to cost you the race. So I'd, I'd say a little bit more discipline on the holding of the breath, and then um, Sarah does actually do a very good job of maintaining her tempo all the way through. It generally is a case where wh whoever slows down the least is the one that gets their hand on the wall first. Sarah does a good job of maintaining tempo all the way through the race. So I would say to Kate, look, you can see here, I think her, her tempo even drops off oh. right at the end there. She's probably down to 46, 47 mm. there. So she probably went from a 52 to a 46 there. So. She's got to maintain tempo. So th those couple of things, reaction time, um, don't take a breath, maintaining tempo and actually increasing tempo a little bit. So she does that, I think she's in the money. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. We're gonna thank you Jamie Ingram for sending this from Pool Deck uh, out, out in Athens at the World Cup. I uh, hope you're doing well and thanks for sending this through so we can take a look at it. And if you wanna see more of these, we're gonna be putting them on Brett's channel, which this one's on. Some on my channel as well. So if you wanna subscribe to my channel at The Swimsuit Guy, check us out on Instagram. Check out our website, www.bretthawk.com, www.theswimsuitguy.co.uk. Subscribe to this channel, hit the like button. And remember, this is just two people sitting on a couch. We have nothing but respect for these athletes. They're the ones out there doing it. We love swimming. We love talking about it. But all our credit to these athletes. They're the ones competing. Keep it up. Yep. Cheers, guys.